Hey everyone, as you know, I have my debut solo show in London this week, uh, despite and to spite lockdown. So I'm going to give you a super quick tour of just of some of the highlights. And what you saw in the opening is the name of the gallery, Espacio, which is in Shoreditch. So I'm gonna turn the camera around now and give you a quick tour of the highlights of the show and the the ground floor where we're at at the moment is um, is hosting the abstract expressionist paintings and they are called touch me it's a collection called touch me if you want to know more about why it's called that and how the collection came about you can visit the website verryvalerieellis.com to read about why the show is called that but in the meantime I will show you some of the gallery so this is this is outside and when you come when you're outside you come across this painting it's the largest in the show it's 1.8 meters long and 60 centimeters high and I'm not sure if you can get the impression of how large it is on video but it has a lot of impact and a lot of people have come in from the street because they saw it as they were walking past and it has a lot of impact. It's the last painting in the series and it really represents the, the uh, fulfillment of all of the techniques and the coloring and the composition that uh, were accumulated through painting all of the paintings, all 13 of the paintings in the collection. So I'll just give you a, a sort of walk across of some of the brushwork. The emphasis in the, in the collection is on brushwork in particular, brush strokes. And the idea is that you as the viewer, if you want to be touched, if you want to feel connected, then if you're open to that and you look at the brushwork, you can get a sense of the hand that made it and the touch that made it. So there's a view of the colors. This one's very, very focused on purples, blues, and yellows. And there it is. You can get a really great sense of the the scale of the piece at this angle and the drama. And I think it would look really fantastic in a, in a residential setting, in someone's sort of very stylish dining room, something like that. So that's, that's one of the large pieces. This is the room, the upstairs room. So it's that, that classic white cube gallery. I'm going to show you now my personal favorite from the series. This was number two and I think uh, I like it because of the colors. So for me the the colors are particularly appealing. I like the composition. You can see that there is a, a white section in the middle and it's sort of squeezed by the dark sections either side. So you get this sense of compression in the middle of the painting, of it, of the, the light section in the middle really bursting out of the darkness. Or whatever you like would like to see. So I'll, I'll show you a little bit more closely in this one. Again, so you can see the drama, how the white brush strokes really stand out against this darker section here. And there's some very subtle tonal variations in this dark section. So all of these, some of these colors are all quite dark, the dark green, the dark blue, the dark brown, this sort of dark purple, the brown there. And there's a lovely sort of blending effect. And then in these lighter sections, there's all, where all the light, set, all light colors sort of accumulate. So there's a light pink, a light yellow, a light, sort of gray, blue, the whites. And so by collecting together the colors in, the light, in terms of tone, in terms of light and dark, 
you get this particular composition. There's some sort of very citrusy yellow in this part. It really sort of explodes with colour and vibrancy right in the middle there. And I'll give you a sort of angle across. It's, uh, it's interesting. Some paintings look particularly good face on. The first one I think looks particularly good straight on. For some reason, I don't know why, this one I think looks looks particularly good from this angle. <laughs> I just noticed this yesterday. So, so if you if you take it home, you're going to have to stand at this angle all the time if you'd like to what if you'd like to see the painting. That's that's the rule if you take it home. So that was number two in the series. There's uh, and that one I think I think that one's 90 centimeters. Let's have a little look. Nine, no, that's 120 centimeters wide. So again, a big dramatic piece in a, re a residential setting. There are smaller ones. This one is 90 centimeters. That's a little bit more um, compact for residential. There's also some very small pieces. So this is a very petite piece. Now you can see me in the reflection. This one's covered with glass because it's framed and it's framed in a really beautiful gold leaf. So it's quite classical. It would fit into all kinds of settings. And this one's very purpley and yellow. It's got real drama in the center. There's a real sense of it. I'll try to get my reflection. No, I'm not going to get my reflection out of it. There's a real sort of, again, like the, like the last one, there's sort of a, a light center bursting out of a dark edge. And you can see, again, closely, there's a lot of drama in the sort of knotting together, the knotted together brush strokes, and some really beautiful color combinations. This, I like this peachy color in the middle there with that blue and the yellow there. So if you are a very visually sensitive person, I think spending some time looking at these uh, will be rewarding. And there's another one of the smaller ones on this wall. And then over here, we've got a particularly light one. I'll show you that because it's unusually light. Most of the paintings in the collection are quite dark. But this one is very light. Somebody said it reminded them of spring. And I suppose it does. And I'll show you the brush strokes in that one as well. So they're very uplifting. I think this one's very fresh, very uplifting. We were saying that I think it would look good on a dark grey wall. So if you had a very, if you had one of those feature walls in your house that was dark grey, this would really be fresh and burst out and be high contrast against a dark wall like that. Again, here's some close-up of the brush work. And you can really get a sense of the brush that made the mark and the, perhaps some sense of emotion or action behind that mark. There's a little dark spot there. So again, if you're visually very sensitive, I think there's, uh, there's some appeal there for if you sat and sort of enjoyed watching. There's another one of the small ones, and then this one's very, very green. Perhaps something for environmentalists. <laughs> People who like, who's, for whom green is a favorite color, perhaps. So that's very fresh. And you can see that in that one, very much the drama of the brush strokes. I think this one, this one really highlights the drama of, of really strong brushwork. Now, if you like, I'm going to take you downstairs to the lower gallery and we'll have a look at the other collection. There's me walking down the stairs. <laughs> we'll have a look at the other collection that's downstairs. And this collection's called Faces. So what these all have in common, the, these are not abstract expressionist work. These are all portraits, drawings, paintings, pastels. So let me show you some of these. So there's the space in general, you can see. We'll come back, we'll come back to this section I'm showing you now, because that's got a little television presentation. 
and I'll show you some of the work from here. So there's three portraits, so very much in that sense of um, portraiture. Who recognises who that is? If you're a feminist or uh, someone who likes literature, you should be able to recognise who that is, especially if I could, did a good job. This one's a pastel portrait, so let me show you close up. It's quite sketchy, it looks quite drawn. And it's a pastel portrait with a very sort of creative colour scheme. I'll show you one that's a favourite of a lot of people. So this one, a lot of people say is their favourite. And I must say, for me, it's one of my favourites in terms of what I've ever painted it portraiture-wise. I think it has some... Uh, it puts together a lot of elements of portraiture that really work nicely together. I'll show you more closely. Let me know if you like that one. That one's for sale, but at a, at a relatively high price because I wouldn't mind too much if that one didn't sell. Uh, there's three paintings or three portraits or three faces here. Okay, let's have a look at a drawing. So this, I love the angle on that face. Isn't that great, the way she's just turning around? So that's a portrait. And I'll I'm gonna show you this one in particular because this one was accepted into an art competition. This is called Beauty and Determination and it was accepted into the ING Discerning Eye competition in London. And a lot of people have admired this one as well because of, again, the brush strokes. Very dramatic brush strokes, but it really gives a sense of strength even though she's very beautiful, the brush strokes are very strong and I hope communicates a sense of strength as well. And who wouldn't want hair like that? That's another lovely thing about it. That's, it's got great hair. She's got great hair. And one of my very, very much favourites is this one called Geisha Face. And I love, I don't know, I've always loved the Japanese aesthetic. And that face just really really reflects that. Look at the brush stroke in her hair ornament, around her eyes, her lips. I mean, I just, the lips just came out so beautifully, so juicy. So that's definitely one of my favorites, even in the background color, the, the green, the brushwork. So that's one of my favorites. And let me show you, we've got a section over here that's just drawings. So if you're a person who likes very subtle things, just a bit of black and white and gray, we've got some drawings here. The first one is an original, the second one is a print, the third one is a print, and the fourth one is the original. So this one is the original, and that one is the print of the same one. So you can buy an original drawing. There's me again in the reflection. You can buy an original drawing, or you could buy a larger version if you are thinking you'd like a larger version of the same thing, there's another nice one there. And let's have a look at this, um, let's have a look at this television presentation. So, um, the wonderful filmmaker Michael Dunn came to my studio in Surrey and he made a film of me painting a painting. It's a verb and a noun. <laughs> And um, what's showing on the television in the studio, and it looks a lot better than you're seeing now. This, the screen looks very blue that you're seeing, but it looks a lot better in real life. Um, the film is of the process of painting that painting. The, it started with this drawing, which is a, a pencil and charcoal drawing. And then the next part of the process was this pastel portrait which again is one of my favourites. I wouldn't be too upset if nobody bought that because I think that, that turned out very beautifully in terms of colour and texture and composition. And then after having done those two, the painting comes out. So that is the painting that emerges from the process of doing the pastel and the drawing. You can actually buy all three of those pieces together. So I, I really thought it would be wonderful if somebody bought all three, the drawing, the pastel, 
and the painting and you could hang them together and see the process of how you get to the end painting. I, I love that idea. But of course, if you'd rather buy just one, okay, I'll let you get just one of them. Uh, on my website, you'll be able to find this video. It's 15 minutes long and it was made by an incredible filmmaker. I, I mean, the man has made films with um, very famous people. He's very modest, so I won't tell you because he'd feel very awkward about it, but he's made films for very, very famous people. And I was very, very lucky that he came and found what I do interesting enough to make a film for me. So if you're interested in watching the whole film, you can go to the website, verryvalerieellis.com, and you'll find the film. It's also on YouTube. You'll find the film, and you can watch that, because it's. I think it's actually quite interesting, even though uh, it sounds like, of course I would, because it's about me, but um, it is actually interesting <laughs> as a film. So that's a little tour of the show in London. Here's the... Here's the gallery from the other end. If you're in London, in Shoreditch, you can come to Espaccio Gallery. Even if you're not in London, you should absolutely come to London immediately to see the show because it's absolutely fantastic and wonderful. And you need to get in early while I'm still a fairly unknown artist and before the art becomes worth so much more than it currently is. <laughs> and anybody who comes especially during the current situation, um, I will favour you. I will favour you in all future occasions. <laughs> so thank you for joining me on the tour. I hope it's been interesting. There's the big showstopper. I call that the showstopper. 1.8 metres across. Thank you so much for coming again to the show in anticipation of you coming. I'm going to end with the, the gallery sign and ask me any questions in the comments below or message me if you have any questions or you'd like to help. Thank you so much, art lovers. See you. Bye.